Hi folks, this is Chris Hayes with Chris Hayes Team, Keller Williams Realty in WLA. You know what, we have a neat treat today. It's a show that was brought to my attention the other day called Surreal Estate. It's about a real estate agent who solves ghost mysteries or haunted houses or something along those lines where he can sell the properties. So uh, let's get started and see what this thing's all about. I'm Luke Roman. Sorry, I dropped by so late. I'm here about the house. So that's <laughs> that's one way for a show to start out, right? The suspense build up. Knock, knock, knock. Who is it? It's not the killer. It's it's the real estate guy. That's what we're here for. We're always prospecting, looking for new clients we can help in a real estate transaction. Storage six bedroom, four and a half bath, multi level hardwood floors, lots of custom woodwork. The house wants to kill me. Seller motivated. <laughs> the house wants to kill me. You sound motivated. We're looking for reasons why people want to sell, right? Or buy a house. So, uh, okay, that's one way to, to find out if your house wants to kill you. Yeah, I would suggest I'm pretty motivated too. What's wrong with the house, Mr. Roman? It's Luke, please. And it's sort of difficult to explain. So I have this keynote presentation here that sort of lays it out. Now, a listing presentation. That's what he's talking about with the keynotes. And so he's actually demonstrating or sharing the steps in getting a property sold from the point of meeting and prepping the home and the seller for the home sale process, as well as uh, going through the marketing, negotiating a transaction, taking it to closing. My normal steps do not include exercising a ghost out of a house or something along those lines. But hey, you know, uh, maybe if it called for that, I'd be open to it, you know? Snap. Oh, you have no idea how many euphemisms we focus group before we hit on metaphysically engaged. I don't get it. Well, we were hoping it would spell out something cool like Spectre, but oh well. All right, SMEP. I don't know what SMEP is, but anyway, there are a lot of acronyms in the real estate business. We have a cool one that's called SMART. SMART is uh, a way of we identifying proper way of goal setting. So S-M-A-R-T is SMART is specific and M is measurable and A is accountable. You can account for the goal and R is reasonable or realistic, and then T is a timely goal. So a lot of times in real estate, you'll hear people go, set SMART goals, and that's what they're talking about. So maybe that's the kind of thing they're going for, but they end up with SMIP. A stigmatized property is one whose market value has been affected by unfortunate occurrences speaking of stigmatisms i have a story that comes to my mind there was a house that was known as the cat lady house and there were cats everywhere there were some dead cats in the yard and they were coming and going in and out of this house and i believe the lady actually died in the house and then shortly thereafter not too long thereafter somebody committed suicide upstairs in the house i remember that at one point there were hazard crews in the house. I mean, guys dressed in full hazard garb, you know, hauling cats out and having to tear sheetrock out of the bottom story of the property. It was a mess. It was just a mess. This was a $450,000, $550,000 dollars house. After all that damage was done, I think this thing sold for $150,000 or $160,000 to some investor who spent a lot of money to fix the property back up and then back to, to good market value. But boy, what a stigmatism because of some sort of craziness that, that happens tragic events associated with the property including but not limited to murder suicide even accidental death or the perception real or imagined of any residual unpleasantness related to said unfortunate occurrences so in our state murder is not required to be disclosed on the property condition disclosure form it may be different in other states if specifically asked we can't lie about something However, it's not required by a seller to disclose on the property condition disclosure form whether a house has had a murder in it or if somebody has passed away in the house. So if that's something you wanna know or you're concerned about, be sure and ask the question to your real estate agent so they can get the information from the agent representing the seller. So you're a ghost chaser. Miss Donovan, Megan, 
naked. I'm about one thing, preserving homeowner equity, protecting the God-given market-driven value of your property from anything in this world or the next. So he's talking about preserving the seller's equity in the property by eliminating the problem with the ghost. At the end of the day, we real estate agents, when we are operating with our clients, we owe a fiduciary to them, meaning that we operate it in honesty, integrity, skill, diligence, apple pie, and Chevrolet, right? So we represent our respective clients to the best of their interest. That's our objective. And preserving a seller's equity is one of those best interests. Client is Donovan. Hey, she inherited a place from her grandfather. Boyfriend lives with her, a lawyer. You know the drill. Complete psychokinetic triage, malevolent entity evaluation. So now they're in a team meeting and teams can be identified in a bunch of different ways. We've run a Chris Hayes team, a real estate team within the brokerage of Keller Williams for years and years and years. Our team or whenever a team operates like I've operated, usually you have specific people doing certain jobs in the real estate transaction. And so very often in today's world, even a solo real estate agent with their team, they've got a conglomeration of folks that helps them in the marketing of property. For example, if I list a home, I'm gonna call my photographer and he's on my team and he's gonna go out and shoot professional photography on the house. And once we receive the photos back, then I've got my listing launching person. She's the person that specializes in getting into the multiple listing services and all the search engines and launching that. And then once that's launched, we have our social media person. They put it on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, etc. And then once we go under contract, we have what's called a transaction coordinator. So this is the person that coordinates the 50 people that get involved in a real estate transaction to close a deal out to finalization, to closing, to settlement of exchanging property with the money. Hopefully that gives you an understanding about a team. This is his team, it's his dynamic for the ghost, uh, crazy, haunted field of real estate sales. Well, the referring agent is certain there is a poltergeist. Who's the referring agent? Rita Weiss. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have to call Rita Weiss and tell her we came up empty. So it looks like we got Rita, the referring agent who is a complicated personality to get along with. Interesting thing about real estate is our objective is actually to be in the middle of a transaction between buyers and sellers and help facilitate a deal, right? It behooves us to get along and be courteous and be cooperative with each other so that we can help our respective clients get to their end objective or the end result they want. So whenever you have Rita, who is the difficult real estate agent, obviously that creates a challenging aspect for somebody to want to reach out to her to work on this deal. And by the way, it doesn't help Rita's situation at all either because she's actually um, pushing people away. That's not the best benefit for the client. Uh, I know a couple of real estate agents like that. When we do do a transaction, we're like, all right, let's, uh, let's grit and bear it. This is gonna be a tough one, but we're doing it for our clients, right? And yes, that's why we do it. Some agents that get that reputation, boy, it, it, it's just a challenging personality to work with. And yet, the right real estate agent is gonna do it because it's the right thing to do for their clients. Everybody, this is Susan Ireland, our new agent. We stole her from Livingston, Kent, where she spent eight years straight in the platinum ring of steam. I'm so excited to be here. What's the platinum ring of the steam? It's just this club for people who do $10 million in volume over a 12 month period. There are names for all sorts of awards. There's the Platinum Club and the $100,000 Club and the Million Dollar Club and the $10 Million Club and the Highest GCI and the Most Units Club. Oh my goodness, it's just ridiculous. In real estate, there's an award for everything. Rookie of the Year, Old Timer of the Year, Legends in Real Estate. So I guess maybe I kind of fall in that one since it's been like 30 years I've been practicing real estate, huh? Don't tell too many people. Miss Donovan, Megan, I really feel like you're making a mistake here and a potentially dangerous. Yes. I'm sure your fiance is skeptical. And I realize things look very different in the light of day. All right, so it looks like Luke here is being second guessed, right? Or he's being, he's being canned because 
an opinion of the fiance has come into play. And this is, uh, he's skeptical about hiring Luke or the ghost haunted real estate agent to help them out. You know, I have uh, been in many situations where a, a parent, mostly a parent or an upcoming spouse, meaning a future spouse, a fiance, something along those lines, gets involved in the real estate transaction. They have some sort of skepticism about their relationship with a real estate agent. And maybe it's just because they don't have their own fingerprint on the pulse, which a lot of times, you know, bring in a little bit of input or give some guidance. That's what us parents do for our kids is we try to give them guidance so they make smart decisions, right? At the end of the day though, give them the benefit of the doubt of gathering more information there. The old phrase is stay in curiosity and out of judgment wouldn't the whole world be a better place if we could do that, right? So it's an interesting dynamic where Luke is at right now. And he's saying, hey, let's have a conversation around that, discuss it, and then go from there. Has Luke explained the, um, the niche of the market that we serve? Oh, I did my due diligence. I know you people are specialists. You can close the houses no one else can. The problem houses, and you usually get your asking price or better. The numbers don't lie. Now, there are niches in the market. So, for example, there might be somebody that serves luxury market or repossessed homes, uh, bank-owned properties, for example, or HUD homes. There's also people that serve the superstars, the rich and the famous. Um, I don't know of anybody that niches in uh, haunted houses. Hmm. Maybe that's an opportunity there. Ah, <laughs> did you see the section with him in front of all the properties with the sold signs. It's funny. We real estate agents are always seeking new business or if we have any longevity, we're always looking for additional business. And sometimes the marketing includes uh, putting a sold sign sitting in front of a house with a sold sign saying, yeah, we did this. And his particular instance, I'm sure he's super proud selling a haunted house. But next, you know, whether we have a house with a sold sign in front of it, or we have a picture of our clients with a sold sign in their hands or a set of keys in their hands. So we're always proud. Sometimes real estate agents have a little bit of an ego. It's not unusual that they're going to take some sort of success and then and then hopefully multiply it a little bit. Share that with other folks so, that, so they can gain confidence of additional clients and, and keep moving forward in their real estate career. So it's not unusual. What was our client on the phone? Oh. She fired us. Oh. It happens a lot. Oh? They almost always come back. Oh. So we'll proceed as if we're still hired and see how things go. Now, in this particular instance, he's proceeding as if he didn't get fired, right? So anticipating, based on his experience, that the clients are going to come back to him. Well, obviously, he's in a niche haunted seller specialty. That doesn't normally happen. Whenever a listing agent is fired or canceled from the transaction, usually, hopefully, there's a shaking and a goodwill wishes, and then the seller moves on and the real estate agent moves on. You don't go on typically marketing a property that you don't have permission to market. That's that's something you can't do. And time is money. Let the seller go do what they need to do to help accomplish what they need to accomplish. And as a real estate agent professional, go do what you need to do so that you can uh, go help the next client. And if there's something to learn in the process, go learn it and then serve better. Some agencies, they help their clients sell their houses by reducing clutter, by putting drops of vanilla extract on hot light bulbs for that fresh baked cookie smell. So he's talking a little bit about some things that traditional real estate agents may do to help a house show better. The common trending word you've heard a few years now is staging, where it looks good, smells good, has a good feel about it. Once you show up to a property, curb appeal, into the house, etc. So yeah, you wanna make a good presentation? You wanna get top dollar for something? Then give a good presentation, right? Here he's talking about, we're gonna get rid of the ghosts in order to make it a saleable property and preserve the seller's equity. Bob Livingston fired me. We had a thing. It was unprofessional and wrong on both of our parts. So we have a real estate agent that was uh, having a, an affair with her boss. Where do I go here? Um, I'm married mine, so <laughs> I don't know where to go with that. I'm happily married to Dana Hayes. 13 years now, 
and uh, we actually met in the real estate business. So uh, starting Keller Williams in Treeport. She's the bestest. 34. I'm not in a relationship. I am locked into an above prime mortgage rate. Above prime mortgage rate. Prime is an interest rate that's uh, calculated by the banking systems and what they primarily it's based on what the central bank loans money to local banks at a certain prime rate. Now mortgage rates they can fluctuate a little bit above or below prime. When you're above prime it probably means that she got some sort of teaser rate. It might be in other words a little bit above market rate loan and rates fluctuate continuously. So maybe when she got the rate, the rate was 6% and maybe the current market rate is 4%. So prime is down, maybe it's three to three and a half, four percent and she's in a 6% rate, well then she's an above prime rate. It's not the end all be all, it's just, it means that she has a rate that's higher than what the current market rate is. That's all. You're the ghost guy. I'm the real estate guy. You are a delusional oily ball sack wrapped in Armani. Nice, Rita, from the kid. Ah, there's the infamous Rita. I know a Rita. I'm not gonna tell you the name. Do you have a Rita in your work environment? If so, comment below. Don't give me the full name, just the first name. Or initials, maybe. <laughs> Something bad did happen here. It had to have been prior to 1851. Right around the time they took that picture on your sign, Rita. <laughs> That's a good way to dig on Rita, right? So apparently Rita has an old headshot on her sign or her card. So Rita might be about 10 years older than that picture on her sign. <laughs> In fact, have you ever seen the picture of a real estate agent and then met them somewhere in public and did not recognize them because you had this image in their mind of some other picture you've seen of them and you go oh my goodness you <laughs> you must have taken that thing 10 or 12 years ago or something it's funny to see some of these old glamour shots that we've done in the past all right so real estate agents some of us have egos and we're holding on to the fountain of youth as much as we can as well so maybe we use a picture that's a little bit older whatever oh dear are we gonna have a problem here no problem we just learned some interesting things about your house be a violation of my sacred blood oath to not disclose them to you. Real estate agents take a sacred blood oath. It's like the oath the doctors take. You just mentioned carpet more. Uh, blood oath to be a realtor. I've never taken the blood oath to be a real estate agent. It basically works this way. Whenever you pass the state exam, you become a real estate agent or a real estate broker. It doesn't automatically designate you as a realtor. In order to be designated as a realtor, you have to be a member of the National Association of Realtors, NAR, and then that means you live by a code of ethics in the manners in which you practice real estate. So there you go. A lot of people don't like you guys any more than lawyers. We are both parasites. Real estate agents do less damage to the host. That's a catchy little line there, huh? We're both parasites? No, that's not true. Do we do less damage to the host? Yeah, maybe. Whenever you're hiring a real estate agent, typically it's because you're having a realtor help you in uh, marketing your property and they're getting paid to do that for you and accomplish a result that you want to make happen in your life, right? Or if you hire a real estate agent and they're paid by the sellers of the property that you purchase because commissions are traditionally or commonly paid by the seller of real estate. So now you have professional representation. It doesn't cost you anything. Whereas in my humble opinion, contrast when you're hiring an attorney, very often it's because you've got some sort of controversy with a dispute of some sort. And as far as the parasite comment is concerned. By the way, we don't get paid unless we get a result. A lot of times attorneys will charge a retainer fee or hourly rates and those kinds of things. And so, you know, when people say they don't think too highly of a real estate agent or they might be comparing us to an attorney or maybe a car salesman or something along those lines, usually in my observations, I go, all right, it's because you had a bad experience with a particular person. That doesn't extrapolate the whole industry to be a bunch of car salesmen or a bunch of attorneys or a bunch of realtors. Really, the relationship in each of those fields is unique. Some people are in it just just to serve themselves, but there's also a lot of folks in those industries that are really looking to bring value to the transaction with the consumer. And it's not the same type of negative connotation. 
one apple does not spoil the bunch in real life. I grew up in Southern California. I went to UC Santa Barbara on a tanning scholarship. I got my real estate license and I did okay. I went to school in California as well. Northern California, San Jose State University with a business degree, concentration in accounting. And uh, that's where I started my real estate career after uh, I got out of the accounting business. So there's my bare bones. You are gonna get sued back to the Stone Age and lose your license. There are several ways to lose licenses in real estate. Very often it's done with unethical behavior or misappropriation of funds or flagrant negligent activity. Something like this, if somebody is not intending to do something on purpose, very often it could be managed with a fine or continuing education, things along those lines. There are also situations where real estate agents can get into some sort of controversy with a consumer. And in those situations, we real estate agents are required by whomever your commission, your state commission is, to carry errors and omissions insurance. And just for good measure, my brokerage actually happens to carry the additional policy way above and beyond the minimum standard required commission insurance because we are sometimes we can be in a litigious society and we want to be protected as well as our our clients we represent be protected as well <laughs> get a good night's rest and we'll figure out this thing in the morning. I really can't be alone right now. Can I trust you? Yeah. You can trust me. I love what she says. Can I trust you? And you know, as a real estate agent, you need to trust your real estate agent. So that's part of having a beneficial relationship between a realtor and a client is you got to have trust in your client. You got to have trust in your real estate agent. So ask the right questions, make sure you're a good fit and that you have peace working together. It's just good common sense. Oh God, we are never going to sell this place. Oh, I think you will. You just need proper representation. Love it. That's what we do. We provide proper representation. Interesting comment, proper representation. Selling a property can be a frustrating event in in certain markets, you will have an extraordinary number of expired listings or canceled listings. These are properties that were put on the market and then they did not sell during the listing period that they were under contract. So you may have six months or, or a year or a year and a half go by and frustrations can really increase and get high and it's, it's real easy to lose hope and wondering, hey, is my place ever gonna sell? Again, there's a strategy and there's a pricing for everything. And so I've had a lot of situations, probably a few hundred situations in which clients who were listed with other real estate agents had their house on the market, it didn't sell. I do a lot of solicitation with expired listings. And so I would reach out to them or they'd reach out to me. We'd take and make a connection, do an assessment, learn about what's going on in their lives, learn about what the real estate market is doing and devise a strategy of going, hey, keep your eyes on the prize. There's a way to make this happen in your world. Don't lose hope because losing hope doesn't do any good at all. It is a team sport. You know, you, the client, works with your teammate, the real estate agent, and your representation in helping you accomplish your mission. So sometimes you just gotta have that real truthful dialogue about what the circumstances are surrounding the sale of that property, do what you can to remedy that, and then go on to next. It can happen, it can happen. Don't lose hope, that doesn't make any sense at all. Okay, Sir Real Estate, I really enjoyed that. When this was brought to my attention, I was skeptical about it. However, it was entertaining, it was engaging. There's parts about it that, that, you know, you got a ghost hunter or a haunted house real estate specialist. That's certainly unusual. However, there's a lot of elements to this where it kind of parallels with uh, reality in the real estate world in terms of the basic things of representation and trust and promotion and insurance and licensing and stress and acronyms. So I, I did enjoy that. What, what did you guys think? Have you seen it? If not, go check it out. If you're enjoying this reaction, let us know. We're thinking about uh, doing another episode or two or three or 12 or maybe some sort of compilation 
of future episodes. I enjoyed this, so I think it may be something worthwhile to pursue. Thanks so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this reaction video. And if you have any questions, thoughts, please let us know. And uh, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, like us, ring the notification bell, and then uh, we look forward to, to serving you and uh, taking care of your real estate objectives. If you got anything you need, reach out to us. We're ChrisHayesTeam.com. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Thank you.